Hey, what's going on? Brian Goulet here from the Goulet Pen Company. And I got another episode of Goulet Q&A for this week. You'll have to forgive me, I just ate lunch. Normally I like to shoot Q&A on Thursday mornings and then I have more time, you know, Tyler has more time to edit it in the afternoon. And you know, I'm kind of fresh and perky, but now I'm like all bogged down. I got food in my stomach and stuff. So I don't know, maybe a little more laid back, probably not though. I'm all amped up to talk about Rodia and Claire Fontaine, right? Or Claire Fontaine and Rodia. I forget how I'm gonna be wording it on the blog, but anyway. Um, so Claire Fontaine and Rodia. So I've been doing kind of a brand theme every other week for a little while. Um, and uh, I've been focusing a lot on pens, but I've really focused a lot on paper. And I thought Claire Fontaine and Rodia are big enough brands where I could get a decent number of questions. And I did to get some good stuff. So um, I got about 50 minutes here to talk. Um, we'll see how many questions I can get in in that time. Uh, so let's just go ahead and kick it off. Um, Rachel, or sorry, Raphael P on Facebook started out saying, uh, do you know if Clairefontaine is going to use dot grids in their notebooks and or pads? I like Clairefontaine paper more than Rhodia, but I'm in love with dot grids. Thanks. Well, Raphael, uh, currently Clairefontaine does not have anything that I'm aware of that comes in a dot grid. Definitely not in the US, not anything I carry. I'm not aware of anything in general that they make that has dots. Uh, I honestly don't know why. I think that would be great. I agree with you. You know, I love Clairefontaine paper as well. I wish they would have dots. I wish they would put dots on everything because dot is by far my favorite ruling. Um, they are going to be having one thing that's going to be coming out somewhat soon. Um, the Clairefontaine graphite sketch pad. They're going to be coming out in a dot. I don't know why. I mean, I guess sketching and stuff kind of makes sense with it with the dot excuse me oh there's my lunch um so yeah but that's not anything that we're probably going to carry unless there's a demand for it we don't carry clairefontaine graphite sketch pads right now nor do we get asked about them a lot um they're 90 gram sketch pads so they're not like watercolor pads necessarily but they're just it's blank sketch paper and i guess now they'll have a dot version but i don't know if you're interested in that maybe but that's a really got a different texture to it than the normal clairefontaine paper so i don't think that's quite what you're going for so i'm sorry but there's nothing um you'll have to go with either rhodia or um you know leuchtsturm has some dot notebooks as well but it's definitely not the smoothness of clairefontaine sorry uh burke f on facebook how dangerous is paper fibers getting in the nib slit? Okay, so this is more of a general paper question. Usually with Clairefontaine and Rhodia, you don't have a problem with paper fibers in there because it's so smooth. But in general, paper fibers, I wouldn't say it's dangerous. That's probably a little bit of a dramatic term. Uh, it's, it might clog it up a little bit. You may have decreased flow. You may, um, if, if the paper gets stuck in the tines really like badly at the tip, it could cause some issues with it, like um, writing really wet. I've actually been using some cheap paper before and had the nib kind of scratch the paper a little and the, the fibers get like jammed up in the tines and then it almost writes like a felt tip marker actually, where it like writes really broad and wet and stuff like that. Um, when you get in that situation, that's where it really helps to have a, a small brass sheet. If you check out my Goulet brass sheet video, uh, on YouTube, then you can see that. Um, just floss the tines with a brass sheet and it works really well. Uh, or just kind of cleaning the pen out in general. That will take care of that. If as long as you're cleaning your pen regularly, it really should be a problem. You know, every couple of every couple of weeks, every month or so, or anytime you're changing colors in your pen, that's when you want to clean it. Mira, M, uh, sorry, Lyra M on Facebook. Do either Rodia or Claire Fontaine have Post-it notes? Also, does anyone make a pocket-sized French rolled notebook that can fit a Midori Traveler's book? Uh, so the post-it note, no. Rodia and Clairefontaine do not make anything with a sticky backing that I'm aware. Maybe they have something in their French catalog, but I don't think so. Um, also, does anyone make a pocket-sized French rolled notebook that can fit a Midori Traveler's notebook? Um, the smallest thing that they have is um, Claire Fontaine makes a side, a classic side staple bound that's six and a half by eight and a quarter inches. And the Midori, the small one is 4.1 by 5.25 inches. So it's really not the right size. And the, the, ta the taller regular, call it the regular traveler's notebook is the same width. It's just taller. So it's not really going to fit in there unless you wanted to really kind of cut it down, it could fit. Um, but no, I'm not aware of anything in French ruling that'll fit that. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have a lot of strikeout questions in this one. I know, I know you paper fans are like really specific about your paper and sometimes there just isn't the thing there that you want. 
um, Ray C on Facebook said, if you select one piece of each of the brands, same size, same weight, which one makes a better paper airplane? <laughs> That's a good question. I've never tried it, actually. I've never made a paper airplane out of any of these fancier papers. And you know what? I had these grand plans of like, you know what? That'd be really cool to do in a video. I'm gonna make paper airplanes of all the different types of paper and then I'm gonna throw them and it'll be really cool in the video and I don't have time. So just how my life goes right now with the kids and the craziness and the business, all that. I just haven't had time to even make a paper airplane. So I'm sorry, I won't be able to help you out there. Maybe one of you guys can weigh in and give me some advice about paper airplane making abilities. But I would guess if you were to make it, probably using the thicker the paper, the better. So something like a Rhodia Premium or Clairefontaine Triumph maybe uh, would be good. <laughs> um, Gopi F, forgive me if I say your name wrong, on Facebook. The Rhodia dot pads feel different compared with the grids. Am I imagining things? How many different kinds of paper do they have? When will they make a wire bound dot pad? And will they make one before I get around to visiting Staples and having them wire bind some Rhodia pages for me? Okay, so you got several questions in here. Um, the dot pads versus the grid pads. Um, the paper itself is the same, so you're not feeling anything different there. The only different thing you may be feeling is the ink that's used on the grids. Maybe there's a little bit of resistance or something that you're feeling on the grid. I'll be honest, I don't use, I actually don't use grid paper very much, so I don't have extensive experience with how the feel of it goes. I'm actually just realizing now, like I don't use grid paper. Since the dots came out, I really haven't touched grid paper, honestly. Um, but I don't know, it may be a little bit in your imagination, but I would love to hear some comments uh, from some of you watching this out there to see if that is something that you've noticed. Um, how many different kinds of paper do they have? So if you're talking about rulings, there's a blank line lined with margin in some of the bigger sizes of Rhodia, uh, and then the grid or the graph, if you want to call it, either one of those, and then the dot. So a couple different types there. If you're talking about the actual paper itself, they got a couple different types of paper, not a lot of different types, but a few. Um, you have the regular 80 gram white paper that's used in all of their top and side staple bound notebooks. Um, you have the paper that's in the webby, the web notebook, that's a 90 gram uh, off-white paper. That's the same paper that's used in the Rhodia Premium. So those are gonna be the same feel, same color. Then you have one other type of paper that is used in the, re the web notebook planners, which feels a little bit different than the other Rhodia. It's still 80 gram, but it feels a little different. I think they don't uh, this is what I believe, is they don't coat it as much so that it dries faster. That's better for planners usually um, because usually you're writing on the go. With planners, you want the dry time to be less so that you can just close it up and move on. So with uh, Rhodia and uh, a lot of the Quovatis planners, they will have less coating on that paper that they use in those planners for that reason. So technically, you got three different types of paper going on in the Rhodia products. Carl B. on Facebook said, I've often heard that Rhodia, wait, did I answer your last question? Oh, sorry, no, I didn't. Okay, sorry. Uh, when they make a wire, when will they make a wire bound dot pad? Um, they had one and they took it away. They had one and they put the wrong kind of dots on there. They put the you know fat purple dots on instead of small gray dots. They made that mistake, they pulled them and that was well over a year ago and we were told they would come back, and they haven't yet, so we are waiting for them. I will continue asking, but I do not have control of that. Despite the almighty power that it may see, I seem that I have sometimes in the pen world, I really don't have that much power. Anyway, <laughs> Carl B. on Facebook. Now I'll finally get to your question here. <clears throat> I've often heard that Rhodia is Clairefontaine paper, or a type of it but I've always read it as a high quality vellum of sort. What exactly are the differences? Okay, good question. Rhodia, Clairefontaine, they're often talked about together. I included them together in this very Q&A for a reason. They are owned by the same company. Um, they started out as separate companies. You had Clairefontaine, you had Rhodia, completely separate. They merged back in the late 90s. I wanna say 97, I think. I wasn't around for in the, pa in the paper world back then, but I believe that's the history. Um, they are now made by Clairefontaine in the Clairefontaine mill outside of Paris, about 25 miles or so outside of Paris. Um, but they are used 
making slightly different processes. So I believe that the process for making them is more traditional to the way they used to be. I'm really not 100% sure. I'm actually speaking outside my area of expertise there. I don't know exactly how they're made, but I've been told that there are different machines that are used to give it kind of that rhodia touch than is what's used for the Clairefontaine. So I'm, I imagine that somewhere in the beginning of the process, the paper starts out the same, and then it kind of separates out and they go into their separate processes. And that's why they're a little bit different. Um, but that's about as much as I know, because I have never been to the mill. I've never had any type of like super inside knowledge about how it works other than pretty much what I've just told you. So yeah, they're both Clairefontaine owned by the same company, but kind of branded separately and keeping the kind of their separate tradition of, of um, how they are marketed and bound and stuff like that. Um, the, when you talk about vellum, you know, high quality vellum, vellum is, is kind of a loose term that's used for high quality paper. You know, vellum technically could be like more of a sheer paper. It could be more of like a goat skin type natural paper. Um, but it's really used loosely. So when you, usually when you're talking about vellum paper, you're talking about just a smoother, higher quality paper. And that definitely would fit uh, in the category with both of these. Okay, Andy S on Facebook said, I see on the Rhodia website that the Rhodia Rama books are now available in A5. You are correct. Any plans to carry those in the future? What about blank Leuchtturm neon books? Thanks for doing such a great job. Love watching the Q and A's every week. You're welcome. Well, okay, so Rhodioramas in the A5. Actually, I'll be honest with you, I should have checked this before I started the Q&A, and now here I am stuck having to speak on the spot. I don't know if they're actually available yet or if they're coming soon. You know, usually when a manufacturer will post a new product, it takes a while for it to work its way out the distribution chain. The reason I'm out of the loop on that is because we are not planning to carry the Rhodioramas in the A5. You know, we, excuse me, lunch. We started carrying Rotary Rama when it came out last year and did a whole big video, a whole big deal on it. Um, it is more expensive than the, the web notebook, which is already kind of a premium product. We had some mixed success with it, but not really enough to justify purchasing them ongoing, especially because at the time that we were carrying them, we could only buy them in an assorted pack of all 15 colors. We couldn't buy individual notebooks. I don't believe that's the case anymore. I think as a retailer now, you can buy individual colors, so that helps, but we just did not have a strong enough interest, I hate to say it, to keep carrying them. Now that said, we've kind of gone back and forth about these A5 Rhodioramas. They are pretty expensive though. So I think we've had a lot of people that have been interested in them when we've told them, oh, hey, you know, they're gonna be kind of expensive, like, you know, 30 bucks or whatever. They're like, um, uh, maybe never in mind. <laughs> So, you know, that's kind of where we stand with that. We'd be open to it, but if the demand is there. Um, Leuchtturm, you asked about the Leuchtturm Neon Notebooks. Okay, this is a Clairefontaine Rodia thing, but since you snuck it in there, I'll go ahead and just talk about that a little bit. We can get those, you're, sorry, you're asking about blank Leuchtturm Neons. We carry the lined ones. We've had, it's again the same kind of thing. We've had s very limited interest. If we have a lot of interest in it, go ahead and post in the comments, email us or whatever, and um, we will investigate that further. But as of right now, we're not planning to carry it. Um, you can email info at goulaypens.com if you're interested. All right, Tina M on Facebook. This may be too specific of a question, so I apologize, but I've been curious about the paper in the Clairefontaine Basics notebooks. Some of my pens don't seem to write as smoothly as others, so I was wondering if it was the paper. I noticed that it is a bit glossier than the Rhodia pad and notebook paper, so could that be the difference? Thanks for all these Q&As, you're the best. Well, thank you, Tina. It's nice of you to say. Uh, okay, so the Clairefontaine Basics, just to clear this up, they're the same thing as the Clairefontaine Classic. Same thing, you know, the Basics, you've got several different things. You've got staple bound, cloth bound, some wire bound ones. The paper in all of the Clairefontaine notebooks is exactly the same, same. The only different paper that they really have, aside from like other collections of paper, like the pollen, you know, more cardstock type things, to, but just in the notebooks we're talking, the only thing that's kind of different is the Triumph, the stationary, that is still 90 gram white paper, but it's a little bit smoother. 
That's probably the only difference. Uh, but all of the notebooks, the paper is the same. So if you're having differences in why some pens are writing more smoothly on this paper than on other papers, yeah, the paper is definitely the difference. Um, so, but however, the pen could be the difference too. There you got several different factors here, as well as the ink that you're using. The ink is probably the least important of all three factors, but the paper is a huge factor. And the smoothness of the paper makes a big difference in how smooth your nib feels. And that's something that a lot of people don't really take into consideration when using a fountain pen. It's not the kind of thing you really think about when you're using a ballpoint or a roller ball is the paper, but it really makes a difference. Um, the pen itself, the way that it's ground, how smooth the nib is, the alignment of the tines, all that stuff makes a huge difference too. Even the angle that you hold the pen can make a difference. If you're holding it really high, it's going to write scratchier than if you hold it down lower, believe it or not. So that's something to play around with. Um, but yeah, Clairefontaine paper is a little bit smoother than Rhodia paper. So even just those two that you're talking about, you know, you're noticing a difference in the smoothness there based purely on the paper. Um, but you know, the pens themselves will matter a lot too. <clears throat> All right, Jessica O oh, on Facebook. I was wondering if you could show the new white or silver Rhodia line and the sizes. You're talking about the Rhodia Ice. Also not connected to Rhodia or Clairefontaine, but I'm curious about fountain pens and stone paper. Okay, um, let's talk about the Rhodia Ice first. I happen to actually have one left on my shelf, so I was able to grab it. Uh, very fortunate that I had them um, because they're brand new. They're white Rhodia pads. They're in honor. Um, it's Rhodia's uh, 80th anniversary, so they came out with this white, white pad, and it's got a silver um, logo on it. In the back, all the stuff written on there is silver as well. I don't know if I can actually catch that in the light, but there you go. And the other cool thing, it's got uh, kind of a smooth cover. It's kind of, it's not as rubbery feeling as the Rhodia Premium, but it does feel pretty cool. Um, and then the paper inside is lined, but it is lined with a thin gray line. So that's kind of cool because normally they have like a purple kind of line, um, but it's a gray line similar to like the dot pads have. And then um, in the bigger size, it's going to have the margin on it, uh, which is also gray. So it's kind of cool, very like sleek, very, very cool, chill kind of feeling. Um, it's neat. So this is the number 18 one. This is the only one that I've gotten so far. And apparently this is my last one. So somebody has probably already bought it by now. Uh, so I will be very careful with that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, um, the sizes. Okay, somebody else asked me about the sizes and I can go ahead and talk about that now. Okay, it's gonna be coming in the number 11 number 12, number 13, number 16, and number 18 size. So if you go to goulaypens.com and look at the Rhodey Ice Collection, what we have there is it. That's all they have. That's all they've made. That's all they're going to make as far as I know. So those are your choices, okay? Oh boy, let me get back to my question. Okay, <clears throat> nope, got lost. Bear with me. Oh my gosh, I should have clicked. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, so fountain pens and stone paper. Okay, I had actually never heard of stone paper, believe it or not. So I had to go and look it up thanks to Wikipedia. And uh, you know, basically stone paper is made from like ground up marble and they use this stone in combination with essentially plastic, like a polyethylene type plastic to make this kind of like waterproof indestructible type paper that's sometimes used for stationery and printing and stuff like that. Uh, I've never used any of it myself. However, given the fact that it's waterproof, I would say it's probably not gonna work too great with fountain pens because they use water-based ink. But that is just my complete assumption. I honestly have no idea. If you've used stone paper, please post in the comments because I don't have a clue what I'm talking about right now other than the brief stuff that I was able to look up on Wikipedia. Tristan N on Facebook, does Rhodia or Clairefontaine paper beat scissors? <laughs> I like that question. Uh, no, I said, unfortunately not. Only, they'll only beat rock. Um, however, if you had maybe some of that stone paper, you might be able to beat the scissors, maybe. <laughs> but I'm, you know. Okay, uh, Christine M on Facebook. My Rhodia web book specifies, web notebook, uh, specifies that the paper is Clairefontaine. So my question to you is, if Clairefontaine makes Rhodia paper, what's really the difference between the brands? Thanks for all the videos. 
Okay, so I explained this a little bit earlier, but they started out as separate companies. They kind of joined together. Um, you're talking specifically about the web notebook. Um, there's not a huge difference between the paper that's used in the web notebook and what's used in the Clairefontaine notebooks. They're both 90 gram paper, both very smooth. Um, the biggest difference is going to be the color because the web notebook uses an off-white, which is really pretty yellow color, and the Clairefontaine is bright, bright, bright white. So that's going to be your biggest difference right there between those ones. Um, but if you're talking about a Rhodia pad, that's 80 gram, slightly more tooth to it, a little bit more resistance. It's still very smooth, but slightly more resistance than the Clairefontaine paper. Um, but the Clairefontaine paper, uh, the 90 gram Clairefontaine notebook paper and the Rhodia web notebook paper are going to feel identical. Bill V on Facebook. Do Rhodia web books come in something closer to an A4 size? Yes, they do, but not in the US. Only in, uh, they have it in the European market and maybe in some other places. Um, I, if I wanted to get them here in the US, I would have to special order them in a pretty sizable quantity and they're pretty expensive. I wanna say they're around $45 a piece. So ugh, that gets pretty pricey for a, a bound notebook that does not have refillable inserts. So uh, I've had some interest in them before. And when I told people, hey, look, these are the quantities I need to buy. And this is the price that I would need to charge. It's like, oh, never mind. Okay, so there's that information. Your second question, does Rhodia hold some kind of patent on dot ruling? I find the dot grid ideal, but it's not available from Quovatis or any of the other papers I'm interested in trying, which is kind of a deal breaker. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I understand, I don't think there's any kind of patents involved because, you know, other companies have dots. I've seen them on other brands that I don't carry. I can't recall any right now, uh, but I know Leuchtturm has dots as well. Um, Rhodia has got them. So no, I don't believe it's any kind of proprietary thing. Honestly, I can't tell you why everybody in the world doesn't make freaking dots because I love them and they sell really well. And so every vendor that we have, every manufacturer, I'm constantly telling them, hey, dots are great. Please make th more things out of dots. But I don't know, maybe it's a worldwide thing. Maybe worldwide paper, you know, dot paper isn't as popular. I don't know, but it's, it's pretty dang popular. So what I've found is that the paper world moves at a glacier pace. Um, changes and in innovation with paper tends to be on kind of a slow occurrence. So, you know, I can imagine why, because of the scale at which these factories operate. If you have ever seen any like how it's made type thing about what paper mills are, I mean, they have to make a ton of paper, a ton of paper to be able to have any kind of viable business model, right? So they have to have a, a pretty high demand for things in order to make it viable as far as paper goes. So there you go. Anyway, uh, at WillCW on Twitter, Will Rhodia offer a side wire bound notebook in ICE? I doubt it. I, I just doubt it. You know, I, I believe that they've announced everything that they're going to do. It's a limited thing anyway, because of their anniversary. Um, you know, I want to say, shoot, I hope I right. I, I believe it's the 80th anniversary. I should have checked up on that. Um, you know, let me, let me check it right now. Yeah, you can hang out with me for a second. You know, we're pretty low key here in the Q and A. I'll be completely honest with you, I've been just slammed recently. And normally I try to um, have my ducks in a row before I do the Q&A thing, but there's little details that might get lost here and there. But uh, yeah, let's see. Yep, 80th anniversary. Okay, all right, good, I was right. <laughs> anyway, this is what happens after lunch. I get a little loopy. Oh, I wish I could take a nap right now instead. Uh, maybe you should take a nap and then come back to me and I'll have some answers for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I highly doubt they're gonna come out on the side wire bound. The side wire bounds are not super popular, uh, just in general, as far as notebooks go. So, you know, I'd be really surprised if they did it, but you know, maybe they will. Who knows? Probably not. Uh, Edgar H on Facebook, is Clairefontaine Triumph the better fountain pen friendly paper out there? Um, it's pretty freaking awesome. I love that paper. I really do. Um, the Rhodia Premium is pretty comparable though. Rhodia Premium wasn't always around. It came out a couple years ago. Um, that is pretty great stuff too. So I'm really a fan of that. It's kind of like an off-white triumph. Um, 
you know, but uh, as far as ink resistance goes, Triumph is pretty awesome. You know, however, if you're talking about like the better fountain pen friendly, oh man, when you get into paper, people have opinions. So you can't go saying this is the best paper out there because it depends on what you're trying to use it for. If you're using Triumph and you're trying to take quick notes on the go and you need a fast dry time, uh-uh, it's not the best, you know? But if you want smooth paper that will take any ink that you put on in the wettest nib that you have, that paper will hold up. So, you know, it depends on what you're trying to use it for. It comes down to preference. Um, but if you, um, if you like really smooth paper, bright white paper, and you want your ink to pop, you love to get high degree of shading in your inks because you get a really ink resistant paper, you know, Triumph is awesome. That's what I love it for. Randy P on Facebook, do certain inks work better on Rhodia than Clairefontaine? and vice versa. If so, can you share some examples and describe how they differ? Thanks for doing this and for your great videos and great service. Double exclamation point. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Randy. That's cool. Um, yeah, so the papers are both pretty ink resistant. You know, I've talked a little bit so far about how Rhodey is a little bit different than Clairefontaine, mainly in the smoothness. Um, it's a little bit thinner. You know, it's, it's an 80 gram weight instead of a 90 gram weight. So it's almost negligible, but you get a little bit more ghosting, you know, where you can see what's written on the backside of the page on Rhodia than you will with Clairefontaine. But that's even not so much an issue because most of the Rhodia products that are 80 gram are like staple bound notepads and stuff where you're kind of only using one side of the page anyway. But, you know, that's so that's not so much an issue. Um, you know, how people can define better could vary a lot. You know, what ink works better it depends on what your goal is. Um, the, the paper, the ink will dry a little bit faster on Rhodia than Clairefontaine, usually. You know, the ink will have a little bit better shading on Clairefontaine than Rhodia. You know, it's more ink resistant. But these are really pretty negligible because in the grand scheme, on the grand scale of paper, you know, you've got like the worst, roughest, most absorbent, terrible, bleeding paper in the world over here. And you've got like the Clairefontaine Triumphs and the Rhodia Premiums and super, super, super ink resistant stuff over here. Clairefontaine and Rhodia are both like here, you know? Uh, and then everything else is kind of like down here. So you're really kind of dealing with like the top five or 10% of ink resistant, like top fountain pen papers in the world when you're talking about Rhodia and Clairefontaine. So, you know, the differences you're talking about here are almost probably negligible, unless you've got a lot of experience with one or the other, and then you're almost a kind of a connoisseur because you've got so much experience with them where you can tell the difference yourself, but most people probably wouldn't be able to. <clears throat> um, at Mandrew Manatee on Twitter, um, Rodia, does Rodia Clairefontaine sell any notebook or pad larger than about 80 sheets? I'm a student and take lots of notes. Lots of notes, all caps. Okay, um, really there's not much. Um, they do make, if I can remember correctly, they make a giant Rodia pad in Europe. They don't sell this in the US. But I remember looking it up one time. I was looking at their French catalog. If you're not familiar with the, the Clairefontaine and Rodia French catalog, Basically, they make a, just a crud load, I almost said a different word, but I have kids, uh, a crud load of paper, right? Paper products. And Exaclair is the distributor in the US for Rhodia, Clairefontaine, Quibatis, Exacompta, Browse, Jerbon. Um, so they select what they believe is going to be most popular in the US. And they've got you know almost 30 years experience doing this now. So they select from Rodia, from Rodia and Clairefontaine, I think the Clairefontaine catalog has something like 7,800 different products. It's, a, it's an in, just an enormous number of products. So there's no way all that stuff would sell in the US. So they have to pick the best of the best of what they feel is gonna sell here. And from there, they try to sell it in the US. If it does great, great. If it doesn't, they could go back and try and get more stuff. So that's kind of how the distribution thing works. Um, there's, yeah, so anyway. Uh, so from that, uh, where was I getting at? Oh yeah, there's a catalog of what, what's what I call the French catalog. So it's the full Clairefontaine catalog, full, and there's, I think Rhodey is part of that too, um, full catalog of all these different things that are not offered in the US. Um, like I just mentioned earlier, you've got an A4 size, uh, Rhodia web notebook in there. Same with like the Covatus Habana comes in an A4 size too. Also very expensive. 
Um, and then you've got, let's see, what were you asking me about? Oh yeah, thicker pad. So Rodia has a, I think they call it the giant pad or the big pad or something like that, but it's super thick. I wanna say it's like 150 pages or something ridiculous, but it's, you know, it's, it's priced accordingly, but you know, that would be kind of neat, but I don't know how super practical that would be because it's essentially just a really, really thick Rodia pad, but it's like, per sheet count, it's kind of the same as a regular rope Rodia pad. So you're not really saving anything. And even then it's a top staple bound pad. So it's like, it's almost kind of less functional. So for you as a student though, the really the only thing that I kind of have to recommend personally is the Clairefontaine C8267. Remember that C8267. This is kind of an Americanized Rodia pro or Clairefontaine product because it is not in the European size. It is an eight and a half by 11 size, three hole punched side wire bound notebook with 90 sheets in it. So it's just over that threshold that you set there for 80 sheets. Uh, that's the only thing that I have that's more than 80 sheets is that, that C8267. So go check that thing out. Steven C on Facebook. Hi, Brian. I love the paper specifically used in the Rodeo Weekly Planner. What paper is this and what other Rodia and related products use this exact paper? Well, the exact paper um, I think is only used in that Rodia planner that I'm aware. I mean, there's other kind of comparable papers. I think that the Leuchtturm paper is very similar to what's used in those Rodia planners. However, those are two separate companies and I cannot say that they're definitely not the exact paper. You know, they're not the same. Two different manufacturers, countries are coming from and everything. Um, but <clears throat> they're comparable, I guess. What you've got going on with the planner, okay? I explained this a little bit earlier, but just in case you happen to skip specifically to this question and you haven't heard the earlier part of the broadcast here, the Rodia planner uses a little bit different paper than what's used in the Rodia, normal Rodia notebooks. Um, and the reason for that is usually with planners, it's more advantageous to have a quicker dry time than it is to have ink resistance particularly. So um, the paper is still very good, still 80 gram paper, but it's slightly different feel to it. It doesn't, doesn't have the same ink resistance. It means it could feather and bleed just a little bit more because it doesn't have the same coating on it. Uh, however, it is not going to have as long a dry time as the regular Rodia paper. So if you really like that Rodia planner paper, I would check out a Leuchtturm, honestly. Bill E on Facebook, I like very much the two Clairefontaine journals I own and the smoothness of the paper is amazing, but I feel sometimes it is too smooth and my pens will skip or hesitate to write. I hear that sometimes. Does Clairefontaine make any paper that is still fountain pen friendly, but not so glassy smooth? Well, um, all Clairefontaine paper that's used in their notebooks is the same 90 gram smooth white paper. There is no, no different product that they offer in their notebooks. You've got Triumph, which is even smoother, even more ink resistant, which would extend your dry time and give you more of a potential for skipping and stuff like that. Um, skipping is basically when you're writing, but no ink is coming out, for those of you who are not familiar with that term. So that could be related to the pen issue or an ink or something like that. You know, always you know, clean out your pen. That's, that's the first thing I would always do. Um, but <clears throat> specifically to the paper you're talking about here, if you want basically Clairefontaine paper that's not as smooth, that's Rodia right there. Like that, literally that's Rodia. So I would check out Rodia or maybe the paper that's in the Quavatis Habana. If you're looking at, you know, bound journals, the Habana is an 85 gram paper still made by Clairefontaine, slightly less texture than the Clairefontaine 90 gram paper. So it's more like a Rhodia paper feel. So I would check that one out too. Um, so if you have skipping issues, okay, specifically when you're talking about this really smooth paper, one thing that could be happening, check out your paper, see where it's skipping. If it's skipping more at the bottom of a page or like the middle towards the bottom of the paper you're using, it could be oils from your hand, okay? Because this happens sometimes. When you're writing, you're basically smearing your hand across the paper, excuse me, the paper. And as you're writing and getting down towards the end, you've got all kinds of hand oils and stuff that could be on there, especially if it's the summer months, the spring months, whatever, it's kind of warm. If you have naturally oily hands like I do and get fingerprints on everything, then you may very well be exacerbating that issue without realizing it. And when you have a super smooth paper like that, and a smooth nib and all that, 
you may end up with skipping that I guess technically you could blame it on the paper. However, it's really kind of a combination of paper and hand oils. So that's something to take into consideration. How do you avoid that? Well, if you're writing on the go, you'll have to determine whether or not it's really that big of an issue to you. You know, one thing you could do is just kind of like rub your hand on your pants or something like that just before you start writing. That way you don't have an excess of oils on there. That's one, one easy thing to do. Uh, or you could um, take a small piece of paper or a blotter card or something and put it under your hand as you're writing. That's really more practical if you're doing like a stationary thing where you're like sitting at a desk and writing a letter. Maybe not as practical if it's a journal that you're kind of carrying around with you, but you know, it's, I'm just giving you the information. You can use it as best of your abilities there. All right, Winnie you on Facebook. I love CF, Claire Fontaine, CF. Uh, wondering when the small envelopes will be back in stock as I've been waiting to buy a bunch. Thanks. So you're talking about, when you say small envelopes, you're talking about the small, you know, Triumph envelopes. Yeah, we've been out of those. Technically, we've had them on back order for uh, since mid-December of 2013. So do the math, that was six months ago. Um, we had a really good stock of them, so we didn't actually run out until January. Um, but we've been out of them since January for five months. And it's one of our like top 10 selling Claire Fontaine products, believe it or not, the small Triumph envelopes. Um, so yeah, we've been kind of beating our head against the wall a little bit <laughs> trying to get those. However, we actually, we heard there is a just a shipment that came in from Execlair. They um, have a tracking notice. We've been told that the, it is on the shipment, which like, we'll believe it when we see it kind of thing, but we should have it here on Tuesday. Should, should. Tuesday, that would be May 27th of 2014. So we should have it back in. We've got a crud load on order. So they should be here and we're gonna try to stock them. We've made it very, very clear to Execlair now that this is one of our top selling products and it would be advisable to try to keep this in stock for at least more than half the year at a time. So they're well aware of this, um, had some inventory issues and things going on behind the scenes. That's all stuff that we get to deal with that you guys don't necessarily have to you know know all the dirty details, but just know that it is something that is being corrected and should not be an issue moving forward. Um, okay, Garth M on Facebook, would you consider carrying the number 19 Rhodia pads? And if so, is it possible to get them in the Rhodia Ice edition? Well, I already talked about earlier, but the Rhodia Ice is only going to come in the 11, 12, 13, 16, and 18 Rhodia sizes. So I'm sorry, they are not making it in number 19. That's just not an option. Would we consider carrying the Rodeo 19 pads? Okay, so we used to carry them. For those of you not familiar with what the Rodeo number 19 is. Okay, so this is a Rodeo number 18, okay? And it is an A4 size. The actual paper, the pad itself is A4 size. However, because it is a tablet that is micro perforated and you can tear the sheets out, when you actually tear the sheet out and remove it, technically you're left with a sheet that's three quarters of an inch shorter than an A4 size because of the staple bound binding. So what the number 19 pad is, is it's the same thing as a number 18 pad, but it's three quarters of an inch taller so that it can have a sheet torn out of it that is a full A4 size sheet. How important is that? Nah, I don't know. They never really sold fantastic for us, but really because we use the US Postal Service, we have specific box types and sizes that we use for flat rate shipping and various things to try to keep the shipping costs down as low as possible for you. We were running into some issues of shipping these number 19 pads in some of the standard boxes that we have with our Goulet standard of packing accounting for things like padding and bubble wrap, things like that. So we were running into some issues with that. It was very, ex it was more expensive for us to ship the number 19s than the number 18s. So we kind of just made an internal decision. They weren't selling that great anyway. We were running out of room in our warehouse. They were harder to ship. So we just said, let's just get rid of them. We could bring them back, sure, you know, maybe. I'd be open to that, but 
it's not something that we've talked about recently. Maybe I'll bring it back up. But if you have demand, if there's demand for it, you know, we are here to serve you. So if you really want it and there's enough people that want it and it makes sense for us to go through that trouble to carry them, by all means, we will do that. But it has to make sense in the bigger picture. All right, Daniel N on Facebook. I've got a couple of questions left here. Hi, Brian. My question is maybe a bit off for this Q&A, but here it goes. That's why I put it towards the end. I see you have tons of ink swatches. What paper have you found best for these? Which paper best shows off the properties of the ink generally? I want to start making swatches for future reference, but don't have all that many brands of paper at hand to test it. Thanks. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I did not go through super extensive testing myself when I started doing the swabs. I've been doing them for four and yeah, a little over four years now doing these swabs. I personally use Claire Fontaine 210 gram pollen cardstock. Um, it's not even something that I carry. It's just something that Claire Fontaine has that is available, you know, and I'm a retailer, so I just bought it myself. It's, I don't know how easy it is to come by in the general world. Um, you gotta buy it in kind of sizable packs. So if you're trying to do just a couple swabs here and there, it really doesn't make much sense probably. Cause it's really, I mean, it's thick stuff. Th 210 gram is pretty friggin' thick. It's more than twice as thick as the regular paper. So, but I really recommend cardstock because anything thinner than that, not only are you gonna get some serious buckling if you're trying to do any swabs, but it's not gonna hold up to handling over a number of years. So what I did is I bought um, a bunch of this cardstock, cut it all up into small swatches, um, been using those, scan them in, putting them on the website, gulipens.com, the swab shop, you know, you're seeing color corrected versions of the swabs that I have. And I put them into baseball card sleeves and I have them in a big three ring binder. And that's what I've been using. I've been storing them in there for years. They're protected out of UV light. Um, you know, it's acid free pH neutral paper. So it's worked pretty well for me. I've talked about this you know, periodically, back in the old right time broadcasts and, you know, various emails and stuff that I've gotten. And I've had a couple people that have special ordered this paper here and there, but we don't really do a lot of special ordering for paper anymore because the logistics are really kind of a nightmare. Um, but, you know, there was a time when we actually carried that specific cardstock on our site and it never really sold well because it's, it's not that practical unless you're going to be doing something like this cardstock. So I would say maybe, you know, if you really want you know, shooting, you know, I hate to, I hesitate to even promise that we can do it because honestly, I don't even know if they're making that paper anymore or if they're going to continue to make it. Um, so it's not something that I want to promise that I could get for you, but I will say that you should look into cardstock as your paper choice. Um, you know, so that would, that would be my, my suggestion. Last question. Keith C on Facebook, two things. Okay. Two questions. Uh, first, are you really out of the Nighthawk Monteverde pen? Okay, completely not related to paper, but uh, since you asked, yes, it's gone. It's flown its coop. Uh, we did sell all of the original ones. We sold all of the newer ones that were in good condition. We did have some bottom shelf Nighthawks that had some imperfections in the the coating that was put on the carbon fiber. Basically what happened with the Nighthawk to summarize. They were testing out a new type of pen. It was a kind of a cutting edge thing doing a matte finish on a carbon fiber weave. Well, what they found was that in doing a matte finish instead of the high gloss finish, there were tiny bubbles that you could see that get caught in the epoxy or whatever type of lacquer that they use to cover over the carbon fiber. There were tiny bubbles in there. And in doing the matte finish, those bubbles showed up really bad. You can't see them in the glossy one. They, I'm, I would assume that they're there, but you literally can't see them. They're small, very small, but they're noticeable on a matte finish. It was something that they were just not able to make flawless. So we would get a couple complaints about them. And actually when we first saw them, we returned like most of them because it was kind of an issue. So. <clears throat> that they basically weren't able to solve that problem and so discontinued the pen. It was kind of a manufacturing thing that they just couldn't work around. Can't fight physics, you know? So it was really disappointing, but we had a, a batch of those that were initially 
cosmetically not perfect, so we couldn't we couldn't feel that we could sell them brand new. But <clears throat> you know, Monteverdi approached us and said, "Hey, this pen's discontinued. We've still got all these original pens that they're perfectly fine, except they've got this bubbling on there." You know, do you think people would want them? And I said, well, maybe. So we put, listed them on the bottom shelf and they're now gone. So the Nighthawk is now a piece of history. It's really disappointing because I personally was involved in helping to develop that pen. I didn't visit with the manufacturer or anything. That part was kind of out of my hands, but from a design marketing standpoint, I was helping a lot with that. And you know, I was disappointed that it couldn't work out, but such is life, you know, sometimes you gotta try and fail in order to learn something. So that's what happened in this case. Okay, now second, on to the actual paper question. Uh, Keith, you said, uh, I'm a poet and I usually have written in the Mead type composition notebooks. Is there an equivalent in either Clairefontaine or Rodeo notebooks? I'm more interested in the size than anything else. Thanks and I love the Q and A's. Cool, Keith. Um, okay, so there's not anything like completely dead on to that size. I looked it up in the Mead composition notebook you're talking about. I know what you mean because I was writing you know, journaling in that in eighth grade back when I was talking about how much I love the McLaren F1 sports car. This would have been in 1998. The McLaren F1 was like my dream car back then, which is really funny. I mean, I'm not joking. I went on about this car. It was funny. Maybe I'll bring it in one time and talk about it. But anyway, um, so yeah, that size mead composition thing. I think I actually have one around here somewhere. Hang on. I believe I have one. I don't know if it's weird that I'm talking when I'm kind of out of the frame. La la la, here we go. Of course I picked a blue one, but yeah, so here it is, Mead. Um, if they don't have the dimensions on here. Oh, wait, yeah, they do, hang on. Uh, nine and three quarter inch by seven and a half. Yep, that's what I found online, good. Okay, so it's kind of an interesting size. It's bigger than an A5. Not quite as big as an A4, it's kind of in between. Of course, you know, it's not a, it's an American thing. It's not a European size, but um, the Clairefontaine product that matches closest to it, I found would be the Clairefontaine cloth bound, because this is a cloth bound of sorts. Um, the A5 size, which is a 5.9 inch approximately by 8.25 inch. So it's going to be not as big as this, okay? The A5 size, man, I really should have grabbed some of these ahead of time, but A5 size is basically, oh my gosh, do I even have an A5 notebook here? This is sad. Sorry, I really feel they're prepared. Okay, anyway, I don't even have an A5 thing right here. Wait, I should. Yeah, okay, you got a rody pad. So here's an A5 size, right? So it's not going to be the same size. It's going to be smaller, like so, okay? Not quite there. Um, but there is something that is similar in size, and that is going to be the Apica CD15, which is a 7x10, pretty dang close. Um, or there's an Apica Premium that is a 7.2 inch by 10, kind of a little bit closer. But those would be the two things that I'm aware that are closest in size to a Mead composition notebook. That said, man like right at my time here, that's awesome. I gotta go to a meeting in like two minutes. So that works out great. Um, anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. Man, paper is tough. I get paper questions and there are so many details when it comes to paper. It just is crazy, you know? And paper is a kind of thing like you, you fall in love with these certain aspects of paper and you just want, like, why don't they make this one notebook in a specific size with this ruling that's this specific shade of gray that's six and a half millimeters apart, because that's what I like, you know, and I get questions like that all the time. But, you know, it's just, you only get what you get, you know, and especially when you have kind of a, a I'll call it a limitation of using fountain pens on your paper because that rules out like 90% of most paper because it's too absorbent and feathery and all that kind of stuff to really use well with fountain pens. So when you're talking about like Rodia Clairefontaine, these kind of, um, you know, premium brands of paper, there's only but so many offerings that you have. So you're kind of at their mercy and you just have to kind of adapt to it. So that said, hope these questions were helpful to you. Um, next week, I'm gonna be talking, it's gonna be May 30th and that'll be the 30th. Third, uh, 
Q and A, which is crazy. Um, so next week it's going to be go going back to an open forum. So I'll just be taking all kinds of questions. Honestly, I have enough questions from last week's open forum that I don't even need to solicit for any questions. However, if you've got good questions, you know, I'm more than happy to consider them for next week's Q and A. I honestly am getting more questions than I can answer in every Q and A these days. And so I apologize if I did not get to your question. I'm still burping, man, from lunch. So I've, I'm sorry for that, but I still really enjoy the engagement we have here. I love the Q&A format. I always have a good time doing these. Um, so have a great weekend. Have a great rest of next week. Enjoy your paper. Enjoy your pens. And write on.